I know this looks completely redneck, but I think it might actually work. All right, guys, welcome on back to the channel and to Deer Camp at the Deer Lease, one of my favorite places in the world. So here's the deal. We are at the end of the deer season. Essentially, this is gonna be my last time out here. My dad is gonna be joining me tomorrow. I'm trying to get him on a buck. Um, I'm yet to officially get a, a deer down, a whitetail down this season. But really, the goal this week uh, for the next three days, really, is to try to get two whitetail deer, two bucks. But I'm gonna do something different on this one. So where I'm sitting right now, I filmed a lot of uh, parts of my videos right here. This is this is deer camp base. This is where everyone hangs out. This is where we eat. This is where we make campfires. You know, it's it's all about uh, just having a good time around the camp right here. But there is a feeder about 170 yards from me. We fill it, but no one ever hunts it. Uh, we we every once in a while we'll see some pigs running around, maybe shoot something like that. But late season there's some bucks that start showing up right here and I have seen some bucks over this last couple weeks that have started showing up um, it's not it's not a guaranteed thing but they do come to this place if if everyone's quiet like no one is here right now everyone's out hunting you'll see some deer that come to this feeder and there are two in particular uh, that I'm looking at one is a really old seven point uh, you know his his antlers are kind of messed up he's uh, he's you know he's seen some years I'm gonna guess he's uh, over six years old um, but he's got you know a big mature body and everything like that not a spectacular antler specimen but just just a cool old deer and he's coming right behind the house he's he's been here the last two mornings so we're sitting here in the evening and there's another deer that is probably one of the biggest deer I've ever seen out here uh, that is every once in a while he'll come he's a big old 10 point some other guys mullet man included that was trying to hunt this deer last time he just he goes to like five different feeders he's all over the place inconsistent but this is one of those places he does come and if he shows up <laughs> i'm going to shoot him this is a kind of a sneaky spot that no one ever hunts and i just decided well you know why not i'm gonna sit here and i'm gonna be hunting with my new long range rifle this is the brace built uh, Wild Mesa series in 6.8 Western. I've been hitting this 500 yard target out here pretty consistently. Uh, so it's very accurate at long range. You know, my shot could be at 200 yards. I've set some corn out like kind of past the feeder in some open areas. Um, but most likely it's gonna be right under that 200 yard point, which is just a just an easy little lob for this gun right here. And I'm hoping to get my first deer with this this week and really break it in right so i'm gonna start lowering my voice right now because it's it's past three and we could see deer anywhere from now until dark so now we got to set up our shooting position we're not going to be shooting off of this table right here we're going to be having to sit down and or maybe even stand up to, to shoot over this little guardrail over here so let's go over here and let's look at what we're what direction we're going to be shooting all right so this is the back porch right here and it's it's a pretty clear area the deer can definitely see me from up here so i gotta be sneaky about it i'm gonna get a, sh a shooting position set up try to get where i can get really stable but this is it we got a roof over our head and everything kitchen's right by right there behind us so for those of you that that don't know i participated in the sig hunter games over the summer and i learned a ton and one of the things that i learned about long range shooting is the importance of many different points of stabilization and using whatever you have around you you know whether it's a tree whether it's a bag whether it's you know a friend that's hunting with you to help you stabilize and think of it like like when you're climbing you always want to have multiple different points of contact you know you don't you just don't want to ha like have one hand or two hand you want to have lots of different holds using a bag is awesome and you can, you don't even have to have a bag. You can, you can take like a jacket, stuff it in like a sack, like a stuff sack or something. You can use that. There's a lot of different uh, ways you can, you can set up shots. You know, the best thing is prone. 
if you're trying to sh shoot long range, you have so many different points of contact, you literally have the ground. If you're shooting under 100 yards, it's not a crazy big deal, but when you get like 200, 300, 400, 500, those little, little bitty movements make the difference. And when you're trying to, you know, get a big buck, you want to make sure you're stable and confident. Anyway, I'm going to set off to the side and I'm going to check with my binos. Um, I've also got a camera down there with motion detect, so it'll let me know if something's moving around there. But I want to know before they even get in to the, into the pin. I want to have the opportunity because both these bucks, they don't stay there for very long. They're just kind of passing through, so. closed safety on feels good now let's literally wait by the house for a deer
drop them. I just dropped that deer in his tracks with the Western. Drop him. I think there was another buck. I don't know if it was that other 10 point that jumped out when I shot. I just saw antlers running through the scope, but holy cow. <laughs> That's my first buck I've ever dropped, like straight up on a shot. I just went right at the shoulder with that 6.8 Western and just, poof, you just hear the thud. That thing dropped him like a sack of potatoes. Holy cow. <laughs> shaking like a leaf that was a deer that I had been seeing on camera for like a month and then he disappeared a couple weeks ago and then he just he just came back recently like the last couple days and that thing just put him down <sighs> that's an awesome man that is an awesome thought I'm so glad it worked out this way that's not a trophy deer, but it, it kind of is for me. It's just a really cool deer. I don't know. Just just really like him, you know? This rifle is one for one and uh, zero footsteps. So that's what I like to see, y'all. I just adjusted my MOA and aimed right on that shoulder. So beautifully accurate and uh, that deer's down. So let's head down there and uh, let's check out this deer, man. I can't believe this worked out this way, y'all. Literally hunting at the house. Late season. God, feels good. Feels good to get my first whitetail of the year. Can't believe I'm saying that. looking mature deer you know he's he's not much for antlers but he's a mature buck and for out here for buck to only have antlers like that when they're you know at least four years old it's just not not a good thing he has teeth his teeth don't feel very sharp they've kind of been worn down so you know I don't know the best way I don't know if there is a super accurate way um to really get the deer's actual age but i just kind of look at how their body uh compares to their leg length you know if they look kind of short in their front legs their chest gets a little sag and uh just overall body size more than the antlers itself but he's definitely a mature buck and he's a great one to take he's gonna be a good eater load him up and get out of here and try to be walking
Look at this buck right here. The sun's going down behind me. It's a little cloudy, but beautiful way to end the evening, man. Oh, this is a pretty heavy buck. It's one of the bigger body bucks that I've, I've taken out here and he's going to eat really good. I'm going to do something different with this guy and, and do a, do some more bone in recipes and try some different things. But I just thought what a cool buck he's, uh, he's all scarred up on his back and his sides from, from fighting. He's obviously, and he's had a good run. He doesn't have a whole lot going on with antlers, but God, they're, they're all just scratched up and, and beaten. He is definitely using, used what God gave him out there in the forest. You know, normally I aim a little bit farther back for double long. Um, this thing is so accurate. I just wanted to try for just straight on the shoulder and try to drop the deer. And that's exactly what it did. So, you know, when I'm taking this deer apart, we're gonna see uh, what that six, eight round really did. But uh, just couldn't be happier with the rifle. The trigger on it is amazing as well. And couldn't be happier with the deer, man. So that is it for today, guys. Go ahead and smash that like button for me finally getting my first whitetail of the season. And if you wanna stay tuned, subscribe here to the channel. My dad is gonna be hunting with me in the next few days. My goal now is to try to get him on uh, his, his whitetail for the season, his one whitetail, uh, and his second whitetail of his life. And I enjoy the heck out of doing that, spending time with my dad, and um, you know, just being, spending good quality time in the woods with him. So stay tuned for that. And I am gonna do uh, some cooking recipes with this deer over the winter. So stay tuned, guys. God bless you, Godspeed in the great outdoors, and I'll see you soon.